We're going to start reading at verse number six. We're going to read down to verse number eight. When you get Acts chapter one, verse number six, just stand to your feet this morning for the reading and the reverence of the word of God. Acts chapter one, verse number six. <clears throat> so how many in here is Pentecost? At least half of you. I'm going to have a good time this morning. Amen. How many in here is bad to cost? <laughs> Anna. Anna. <laughs> Praise God. I am so excited to see what God is going to do. I want to say this to you uh, real quick before we get started. Some of you was here at the New Year service. 2022. It has got... Uh, too many twos in it for unity for us to pass over that and say that God's not going to bring unity because he is. Oh, right. 20 is provision. That means God is going to provide. 22 is chaos. And I just want to warn you ahead of time, the world's going to get chaotic, but God is going to do something in the church that is going to be so amazing. Amen. Because while the chaos of the world and everything else is going on, God is moving. And I want to say this because I may want to come back and see this as it begins to unfold. But there are things that's going to happen outside the church in the world. And there's going to be people turn on people. It's going to get ugly. Listen to me. It's going to get crazy. There's going to be people that you have known your whole life seen in Hollywood and places. And I'm, just, I'm just led by the Holy Spirit to say this. You're going to see things unfold and change. And you're going to see a chaotic world in more chaos than it's ever been. But under the scenes of chaos, you're going to see the churches. Listen, I'm talking about the Methodists, the Baptists, the Pre I'm talking about the blood-bought of Jesus Christ church. You're going to see them rise up, and they're going to do exploits underneath the chaos that the world is so busy chasing each other and eating each other up and bothering each other that God's going to move. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to see people from Hollywood that has denied God fall on their feet, fall on their knees and worship God. You're going to see people come from the far, farthest place in the world, and they're going to come, they're going to fall on their knees, and they're going to worship God. But I'm really excited excited about what God told me because what you're going to see more than anything is you're going to see the repentance of the church and the places that they have fallen away from and fallen out and the places that they just thought that that just wasn't important anymore they're going to come back and we're going to see things begin to happen and take place and God's going to do it in the year of chaos come on give him a hand clap praise hallelujah if you have your Bibles, turn me to Acts chapter 1, verse number 6. Are you there? Yes, sir. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. In other words, he's saying, mind your own business. He's politely saying, hey, you're getting your nose stuck too far out in places it shouldn't be. Just sit back, do what I told you to do. Come on, somebody. Be what I told you to be, and don't worry about the times or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. Let me say this while I'm reading this scripture. There are things that have happened. Some of us are looking at and we're, we're saying, you know what? It's time, it's time. And yes, I, I, I want you to know that it is time for Jesus to come back. As a matter of fact, we are not living in the last hours, but I believe we're laughing, we are living in the last minutes of what is going to take place. But God does not want us just to fall down and give up and say, well, let the world do what they want to do and just take me on to heaven. Listen, he's telling them, don't worry about what God has already put in his own authority. Listen to this, verse number eight. But you shall receive power. Somebody say Didymus. Didymus. Yes. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me at Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Yes. 
Dear gracious Heavenly Father, let your glory be uh, uh, moved in this place. Uh, the authority of your word. Uh, Heavenly Father, it has went forth and set a standard uh, and set a stage. Uh, now, Father, let me just be obedient uh, unto the Holy Ghost this morning uh, and preach and say exactly what you would have me to say. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise God. When I first came to Pittsburgh... Uh, to pastor the church. The first time I came to Pittsburgh, I believe, was in 2000. Might have been 2001 uh, when I came to uh, to Pittsburgh and uh, began to preach and minister. And we traveled and, and and preached all up in this area for for several years, preached preach in about nine states. And this is this is one of the little places in Kansas that we uh, would come in and we would minister to. And uh, I, I, I can remember that one of my greatest revivals to ever take place in 2001 was in Mulberry, Kansas. <laughs> really? That's what I thought, especially when I come through. Amen. And uh, we came, and, 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 and there was a Pastor Wells, and he uh, pastored. Uh, there's a place in Mulberry now called All Faith Church. But before it was in the building it was in, I think there's a little convenience store now there by the little flashing light. And Pastor Wells was a truck driver driving a truck, and he was listening to Kenneth Copeland uh, on his cassettes. And he put his cassettes in there, and Kenneth Copeland was, I mean, he was tearing it up. And so one day he said he pulled over the side of the road, and he asked God to forgive him and asked God to come into his life. And he said not only did God come into his life and save him, but he said God filled him with the Holy Ghost sitting on his truck while he's listening to Kenneth Copeland. He said a few weeks later, God said, I want you to come off the truck. I want you to go back and start a church. He said, so I did. So, so he come to Mulberry, Kansas, and he started a church. And uh, he had stepped into one of my revivals that I was preaching. I believe I preached in Baxter Springs, Kansas, I believe is what it was, Baxter Springs, Kansas. And he came down and set one of my revivals. And so he asked me if I would come and, and preach at his church, and I said yes. And so anyway, long story short, we get there. And when I get there, I walk in that building, and I'm thinking, dear God, are you going to move in here? I know some of y'all think, well, you would do that? Well, because, because I, was, I, I didn't know what God was about to do at the time. But I stepped in there and to preach revival, and the first night there was probably maybe 15 people showed up, but, but, but people never bothered me because sometimes I've seen the Holy Ghost move with eight people like crazy. And I've been in churches where there's been uh, all filled up down and even in the balcony in, in, in Los Angeles, California, the Assemblies of God, and, and two services we had to preach. And, and the bottom was filled and the top was filled and probably uh, 2,500, 3,000 people. I've, I've, I've seen God move in big crowds. I've seen God move in little crowds. And, but I just know when God is leading me. And I stepped into a place where I knew that God said to, but when I seen it, I thought, I don't know. Has anybody ever been there? And so I stepped in this place to preach with about 12 or 15 people in it. And so then the next night I, I came back. And back then, I'm, 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 I mean, this was uh, back then where every time I stood behind a pulpit, I had a four-piece, three-piece suit on. And I would sweat plumb through it. My collar would sweat. My, I mean, my, my jeans would sweat and, and my I, everything. And, and, and so we got done. And so the next night we come back and there was about 30 people there. And so I only had one more night to go. And so we come back the, uh, the, the third night, and there was about 40 or 45 people there. And the pastor said, do you have anything scheduled? Can you stay until Friday? And I said, yeah, I can stay until Friday. And the pastor said, God told me that I was to help you this week. And I said, okay. So I thought he meant help preach. And I said, okay, well, do you want me to hand a microphone? He said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, God told me I was to get on my knees this week and I was to pray for you all this week until Friday and I was to be your helper. I said, okay, sounds good to me. And, 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 and so we come in the next night, and you couldn't find a seat nowhere. I'm telling you what, they was coming from the woodworks. I don't know where they came from, but I remember I stepped out one time, and I seen two tractors sitting out front when they pulled up down in Mulberry, Kansas. Hallelujah. And, and I mean, people coming from every direction. And I learned something through that revival, and it wasn't about that the people showed up, but it was about the help. 
When I came to Pittsburgh, Kansas, we were setting everything up for the church to be legal. And uh, we, we, we had one uh, deal set up and we was moving over. And so, and so I got introduced to a place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it's called Paracletos. And I thought, what is Paracletos? And that word means one to come alongside and help. So that's the first time I ever heard that word. I begin to study that word. So this morning, I want to preach on a message called Paracletos, the helper of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. And this morning, I want you to know that what God is about to do in this next stage, he's going to set up a stage that the whole world is going to see. You hear me right now. He's going to set up a stage that the whole world is going to see. And I'm telling you right now, backsliders. Backsliders are the hardest ones to get saved. You can go out into the bars and preach to somebody who's never heard the gospel, and they'll fall on their knees. But you take somebody who's been there, who's failed, and feels like that they're miserably untouchable, that God will not do nothing with them. Matter of fact, they have went back into the world and they've upset all their friends and they made everybody mad and nobody believes it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in here this morning? And nobody believes in them and so they set forth and look at the church and they think I've been there before and God didn't do it now. I didn't do it then and he won't do it now. And they're the hardest ones to get back in because they've heard the scripture. They've experienced the scripture but at the same time they've been set apart. But I'm telling you right now that there is a paracleto that is moving across this world. Praise God. There's two words for the name of the Holy Ghost that is talked about, and one of them is spirit of truth, and the other is helper. And he's a paracletos of God. And we're going to see an uprise of the Holy Spirit. You hear me right now that we have never experienced in this life before. We are seeing a glory of God being revealed upon the church, and we're seeing the church come unto its full identity. The problem with nurse most church people today is they don't know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, you sit idle. And there's not a whole lot that you do. But when you realize your identity and you know what God has put inside of you, you begin to do things. You start moving and doing things. When you have that identity. A lot of the world today has got an identity crisis. Matter of fact, they're pushing up bills. I never thought 20 years ago, praise God, that we would have to fight and, 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 and see if a boy or a girl could go in the bathroom. We're at a stage in age where the world has lost their ever-loving mind. And the church is sitting back, and we're looking. We're just thinking, oh, well, and it be, whatever. Let them do what they want to do. Hang, 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 hang on. We, we don't let the devil do what he wants to do. That's what's wrong with the church today. But I believe that the church has lost its power because we ain't got the paracletos, and we don't understand that he is the helper. Come on, somebody. And when he steps in to help, there ain't nothing you can't do because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. And that word Christ is not his last name. That means the anointed, the anointed one, the Messiah, the teacher. And so if I can do all things through Christ, through the anointing, which strengthens me, then I need the help of the Holy Ghost. I need the paracletos. And here's the thing about it is, is that the church has set back for long enough, and we, and, and we have boasted. The world's boasting about all of its knowledge power. The gangs are boasting about its gun power. And, 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 and countries are, are boasting about its nuclear power. And the church, who has the Didymus power, of the Holy Ghost has set back and been quiet for too long. I don't know about you, but I'm about to show my roots up in this place. I'm about to be a rodeo in here today. I'm telling you right now, it's time that we stand back up again and we speak with boldness the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, Jesus had been resurrected. And the Bible said that when he got up and resurrected, listen, this is so much power. The Bible said that over 500 graves opened up. When heaven shook and Jesus got up out of that tomb, they said that dead men that had been in tombs, listen to me, dead men that had been in tombs was walking around. Hey, Johnny, I thought you died. 
Well, I did. What happened? I don't know. Listen, that's, that's, that's Didymus power. The, 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 the uh, word dynamite comes from the root word, root word of Didymus. And so when I was studying this word uh, several years ago, uh, thank God for Google. Praise God. Because used to, I used to have to put all these books out on bed. My wife would come in sometime, and I'd have this book open up, and this book open up, and I'd have the encyclopedia. And ever so often, I mean, one time my wife went and bought me an encyclopedia, a whole collection. I was like, yes, yes. I mean, because when you read this knowledge, and I looked on it, and it said a 1968 edition. <laughs> and, and we're living in 1998. And so ever so often you have to update your encyclopedia because things change. But Google, <laughs> come on, somebody, yeah. knows it all. I used to tell people all the time, Tanner Lane's middle name is Google. They think they know everything. <laughs> and, so, and so when I was Googling this word, it said that when dynamite was invented, it changed the world. Said now they could make roads. Well, you couldn't make roads. Said now they could level mountains that's been in your way for a long time. Now with dynamite, they could remove trees and stuff out of the way. Said it was a thing that changed the world. It was a dynamite. It was a didymus power. And here we are sitting in a church full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And we think that it's not irrelevant today that we begin to, uh, to speak and to walk in it. I need to tell somebody right now that there are things that's coming your way that you don't even know how to get out of. But the Holy Ghost knows exactly what to pray. The Bible says and in, in Romans chapter 8 that it prays things that you know not of. That it begins to speak. Did it stop the enemy in its tracks that when the enemy wanted to kill you or destroy you that when somebody prayed in the Holy Ghost the angels were sent out of heaven let me tell you something praise God you can pray in the Holy Ghost right now and somebody from China that's about to lose their life an angel was summoned and steps down in the middle of it come on I, I, I know you think that's a crazy talk but that's the power of the Holy Ghost I'm here to tell somebody that it's a paracletos of God it's the helper of God. And when the church stands in to a paracletos anointing where we come unified, one together, that we care what somebody cares about, that we cry when somebody cries, that we stand in the gap with one another, then things would happen that would blow your mind. Yeah. See, when we first get saved, anybody remember when you first got saved? I remember when I first got saved in 1995. Back in the old church, there was probably about 30 or 40 people back in the old church. And there's wood floors. Matter of fact, the ceiling was wood. <laughs> and we'd have, church, I mean, we'd have drums and bass and, and sound. I mean, it would just bounce off the walls, but we thought it was good. <clears throat> and in that old church <clears throat> that I got saved in, we'd come in on Wednesday nights, and there'd be about 20 or 25 people. And in the old church, they used to think, uh, do, do a thing called testimony service. Anybody ever been to one of those services where they had testimony services? And so, and so everybody would stand up, and they would testify about how good God is. And there would always be that one person that wanted to preach. <laughs> no? I would sit over, and when you're in church, about 30 people, and, and so first he said, everybody just looks at you. Now go. You go. <laughs> and so, and so I'll be sitting over, everybody be testifying. Time it got down to all of them testifying, I'll be fired up. I'll be sitting there thinking, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'll be sitting over, and I mean, I'd just be shaking. My knees would be shaking. And I'd stand up, and I'd, I'd look, and I'd say, And for literally for like three weeks, I couldn't even speak. I would stand up to testify, and all I could do was cry. 
as I got in the word and began to speak and began to do things, I remember the first time that I felt the most horrible I ever felt in my life was one day when I was driving down the streets of Atoka, Oklahoma, and I seen a man who used to be a preacher, and he was walking down the road, and he had a, a, a paper sack in his hand, and he was staggering. And I thought, how in the world could somebody like that preach the gospel, get out here and go back? And I remember that the first time I felt the Holy Ghost kick me like I have never felt like my belly was hurting. And I thought, whoa, what in the world is going on? And that's the first time that I realized that I've been in church so long, or I thought so long that I've become a professional Christian, that I thought I knew what it took, that I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew how to go, but I needed a helper. Come on, somebody. I needed a helper to come alongside me and tell me, don't you get too religious-minded. Don't you stand up and think that you can't fall. Come on, somebody. Because several years later, I would fall harder than I've ever felt in my life. And not only that, but I would want to walk away. As a matter of fact, just, just step away from everything. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord. Praise God. It was in Pittsburgh, Kansas. My ministry used to be called Preaching Christ Crucified. And I remember right over there by the mall somewhere, I came in, praise God, and, and somebody said, uh, praise God, you need this big preaching Christ crucified on, on your back glass. And I said, I'd love to have it. And they said, we're going to pay for it. And right over by the mall, this new uh, print shop just started, and they put it on there. Not long after I got it on there, I remember one night I woke up in a dream, praise God. And I just I woke up in a dream, and I woke up, then I looked at my back glass of my truck, and I had Christ crucified, but preaching had been moved off of it. I didn't realize that what was going to happen 15 years later was there was going to come a time in my life where I didn't want to preach the gospel. I don't know who I'm talking to in here this morning. Maybe you're the only one and maybe somebody there. But I'm telling you right now, do not let the enemy come in and tell you that your calling is not good enough and tell you that your calling has no more power and tell you that people won't listen to you. The people didn't give you the calling. God did. And you got to stand up with a paracletos anointing and tell everybody ah, around you that my God called me into this and you have no say so. See, it's, it's Jesus is painting a picture. When you see the temple in the Old Testament, the temple in the Old Testament, everything was laid out in a cross. He had the cross in mind. You came in from the outer courts. Amen. And you came in and you went into the inner courts. Praise God. And then you had the Holy of Holies. Everything God had the cross in mind. And everything you did in the outer courts, you did in sunlight. But everything you did in the inner courts, you did in candlelight. And I need to tell somebody something. God's getting ready to take you in. My God, I don't know who. Yes, I do know who I'm talking to. God is about to get ready to take you in. You've been in the outer courts for too long. And he's going to take you in and the sunlight's been your light. Oh, but he's bringing a light that only oil and fire can show you the direction. And the candlestick is no good and it's worthless unless it's filled with oil and set on fire. And I need to tell somebody today that you have to understand something. That we need the Holy Spirit. It is the oil. It's the thing that runs. Come on, somebody. And not only that, but you got to be fire baptized. Come on, somebody. John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water, but there is one that would come and baptize you with fire. I don't care if they don't like. Preacher, why do you scream? Because I'm excited, praise God. And I love the fact that God would set us on fire and set us out in the world and say, go burn them up. Get this, when you came in from the outer court, you came into the inner court, and you have the candlestick, it's the aura, it means light, 
the same light that Jesus said, who would light a candle and put it underneath a bed is the same light that he's talking about when he's talking about it's the aura and it's the Holy Spirit. It's the oil. And so and so the candlestick that's set right there, right beside it was the table of showbread. And if the candlestick wasn't lit, you couldn't see the showbread. And the showbread is a representation of the word. And I need to tell somebody, if you're not set on fire, you'll never see the word. Come on, somebody. Well, preacher, I don't know about that. I've been studying the word and I've been studying the word. Well, let me tell you something. Call in your prayer closet and get filled with the Holy Ghost and then read your Bible and tell me what you think about it then. Come on, somebody, because it'll shed some light on some places in your life that you've never seen before. Amen. Well, I just stepped off into a Pentecostal church. I just thought they was bad to cost them. That's half of us by the cost. So the other half's plumb full bona fide Pentecost. Praise God. And it is time. He said, don't you sit and worry about the, what, what the world is doing. See, we're still trying to sit and try to figure out. <laughs> and the enemy has separated us so many times in so many places that we have sat and judged I know none of you have. That's okay. <laughs> but we have, we have judged other people about things that they've done. And we have seen their faults and their failures, and we've talked about it instead of prayed about it. We have witnessed the hurt of people. We don't even know their story. It's just we read it on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is a lie. Oh, it ain't either. Yeah, I see your picture on there. Uh, uh, put a picture when you get up in the morning. <laughs> just tell the whole truth, all truth. <laughs> see, and the world, that's what they want to do. They want to fabricate, and the Holy Ghost says, hang on just a minute. The Holy Ghost says, I want you. I want all of you. I want you just like you are. I want to move upon your situation. I want to move into the depths. I want to move into those places. And Jesus, this is what he's saying to them. When he's resurrected, over 500 people had got up out of the grave, and he's walking down. He comes back to show himself to the church one more time. Listen to me. One more time. Look at your neighbor and say, one more time. Praise God. Matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a place in the Bible where the Bible says that the disciples got in the upper room and they locked the door. Almost feels like we've been quarantined. Praise God. And Jesus didn't come to the door, but the Bible said he came to the wall. Come on, somebody. He'll come get you. You can lock the door if you want to. You can be the gingerbread man and say, catch me if you can. But I'm telling you right now, even a big bad wolf will try to blow your head, your, your, your house down. But my number by the hair of the chinny chin chin will God allow your house to fall because his glory is inside of you and you got to stand up and boast about Holy Ghost power I wish we had more people that would boast about Holy Ghost power. I don't need you walking in Walmart blah, 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 speaking in tongues and scaring people to death. Come on, somebody. That's not what it's about. He said do it in secret. Do it in your closet. Fall down in your closet and speak in the Holy Ghost. Now, if he moves on you to speak on the frozen food aisle, praise God. I mean, just get after it. Right by the hog jaws and the chitlins. Come on, somebody. Just lay it down in the middle love them and just tell them what God said if you want to if he laid it on you to do it but under the night get full of the Holy Ghost because when you come out of your closet the oil has been poured in and the fire has been set hallelujah and people's going to see you shine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. years ago they used to say oh watch them there's them Pentecostal people. Yeah. They got saved today. Oh, and they lost their salvation. They got saved yesterday and lost their salvation today. 
They look at the Baptists and say, oh, look at them Baptists. They, don't, they get saved and never, and never get unsaved. The thing about it is, is that we sit around in church for too long. And there's too much power around us to deny. If it hadn't been for God, I'd have lost my mind. And I'm telling you right now that your ministry is on a, a brink that I don't know who it is, but there is a unity that's connecting with your ministry that you have never seen before. And it's taking you to the next level. And that's why the enemy is trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy your thoughts and your mind and everything that you've done up to this point. But God said, hang on. A paracletos is coming in your direction. You hear me tonight. I'm telling you right now, this morning, the paracletos of God is stepping into the church and you don't have to do it by yourself anymore. Let me, let me just bust your bubble just for a minute. Everything that's happened up to this point, you didn't have anything to do with. You can tell everybody, oh, it's my schooling. You can tell everybody, oh, I've been doing it for 20 years. You can tell everybody, I, but if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost helping you, you would have never made it through. You would have never conquered. You would have never done anything in your life. It's always been the helper. It's always been the helper in your life. Jesus said, don't worry about the signs and the times that God has put in his own authority. That means that when God begins to speak, let me tell you something right now. You mark my words. God will never do nothing in this earth unless he speaks to the church first. You hear me right now. We are the mouthpiece of God. I don't care. I don't care what the White House says it's going to do. Let me tell you, the prophets are coming back. Hallelujah. They're going to stand back up and prophesy with power, with Deuteronomy's power, with Paracletos power. This old world, the president, is not going to do nothing unless God has revealed it to the church first. So church, wake up and get up and quit falling asleep and quit dragging your feet and quit whining about everybody that left you that didn't believe in you the paracletos has never left you They can sit around and talk about everything that's going to happen, everything's going to take place. But I'm telling you right now, God would not do anything in this earth until he revealed it to his church. He's not out of order. He's not disorder. He is not running in chaos. He's not a schizophrenic sitting over and shaking and wonder what in the world's going to go on. He's speaking to a church with full of Holy Ghost power, the paracletos of God, the helper of God, the spirit of truth is running free and running through this world today. I don't care what they say or how they want to say it. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, we would have never made it. We would have never conquered it. And we would have never come out of it. Amen. Well, preacher, oh, I'm, about, I'm about to make some people mad. Can I go ahead and just make some people mad? Will y'all still be my friend? Huh? I only heard Juliet. Will y'all still be my friend? Yes. <laughs> People has made it so hard to fall in love with the Holy Ghost. I understand that speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. But let me just, let me just blow your mind. When you stand in the prayer line and you say, I want the Holy Ghost... That is a gift. God, the Bible says he does not withhold nothing. I'm about to make some old-time Pentecostal people mad, but I'm glad because if I made you mad, I did my job. Hallelujah. But, but at the same time, we have been living in religious, in re just religious places that we think if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can't go to heaven. Honey, let me tell you something that has been so far from the truth that it isn't even funny. That I'm sick and tired, and I come against, I come against that religious spirit that would lie to you and tell you and keep you bound 
bound in bondage and tell you you won't make it to heaven. You ain't got to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven, but you got to have the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart because there's some demons in Walmart and you need it. Maybe you say, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. And you never uttered a tongue, and you walk out here, and the church people says, well, they just didn't get it. <laughs> Ooh, probably about to lose some friends over this. That's okay. I'm sick and tired of the lies. If you ask for it, God is not withholding nothing. Now, now everybody works on its own level. Praise God, you might get it, you, you might speak in it going down the road. But I'm telling you at that moment, God fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit. But all of a sudden, let me tell you something, because there's, my God, there's so many different levels, and I ain't got time to talk on this today. But there is a prayer language, amen, and there is prophecy, and there was giving out prophecy. Praise God, there's so many different levels. Amen. As you get into the power of the Holy Ghost. But let me tell somebody, I would that you would speak in tongues. Yes, I would. I would that you would get filled to the place where you speak in tongues. Because let me tell you something. Once it starts coming out, it's better than any crank or cocaine you'll ever take in your life. Every hair will stand on your head. They'll stand on your legs. I'm telling you what, your backbone will do stupid stuff. I mean, your legs will start doing crazy stuff. I mean, you'll be, uh, you, you'll be having the holy box. Uh, 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 praise God. And, and you'll, you'll start, I'm telling you right now, because when he comes in, uh, and uh, listen to me, uh, listen to me, uh, he didn't come in here, uh, but the Bible said, uh, from out of your bellies, uh, come on, somebody, uh, and you'll feel a gut-wrenching thing, uh, and it'll be coming up, and it'll go all through your body. I'm telling you right now, uh, and let me just tell you the truth. Uh, let me be honest with you. Uh, those people uh, who's been filled with the Holy Ghost for 30 years and when they speak in tongues and you say what do you feel and they say nothing let me tell you something get away from them because every time I talk in tongues I feel it from my belly it is a never new thing but it's always absolutely comes through and it's the power of God So for those just walk around talking tongues on Sunday and cuss their dogs on Monday, get away from them. Uh, preacher, why do you say that? Because I'm telling you right now, uh, they're just walking uh, in their own authority uh, and they're full of religious. Uh, but you get a bunch of people uh, who's got the paracletos uh, and they're unified one together with another. Uh, hallelujah. And when they come to church, uh, they get glorified with God uh, and the power of God begins to move. Uh, and while you're here, uh, the Bible says one uh, can send a thousand angels to fly uh, and two can send 10,000. Uh, can you imagine underneath this unity uh, how many devils uh, would have to leave Pittsburgh, Kansas uh, because you come to church uh, and this didn't get churchy, uh, but you got full uh, of the paracletos. Uh, ah, you got full of the paracletos of God uh, that God began to run through your body uh, and you stood up uh, and you spoke those things uh, and then you saw them happen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you like speaking something and then seeing it happen? Yes. Amos chapter 9. Message Bible. Amos chapter 9, verse number 13. <laughs> Amos chapter 9, verse number 13 in the Message Bible. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. Look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. I love the message Bible. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. My God, y'all better hang on. This week's fixing to take y'all somewhere. Everything will be happening at once. 
And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings, like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again. My God, listen to me. I'm talking to somebody right now. I will make everything right again. Some of you are trying to right some wrongs, and you need to set your hind end down and shut your mouth and let the power of grace do its job and let God fight for you. You ain't equipped to fight the devil. That's why he died and rose again and sent the Holy Ghost. Now he said, my helper is going to be your helper. And now you can do all things. I excited three people. I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. Not my dog 2020. It's the good stuff. <laughs> They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them. Plant them on their own land. They'll never again be uprooted. My God, somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to be hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. They'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. God, your God says so. Stand to your feet in this place and give him a crazy praise. <laughs> Father, I did what you told me to do. You are the way maker. The paracletos is now moving across Life Changers Church. Father, we'll become your helpers. Today, I need you to hear me in this place today. There are people you've been sitting next to in church for too long. You just see them, but you have never even stopped to ask them, or visit with them or encourage them. Listen to me. I know you can't help every single person in this place. I know you can't do it by yourself. See, in the old days, when the people of God would come to the judge, the judge would stand up and he'd begin to make judgment. And they would hope and pray that when they stood, in that court that there was a paracletos in there for them somebody that would help them because if there was a helper somebody that would speak up for them I'm so glad that the Holy Ghost speaks up for me Amen. I'm so glad he speaks on my behalf that when the devil says yeah Lord did you see Roger coming to church the other day somebody cut him off and he got mad and threw a fit that never happens by the way <laughs> I'm just kidding the paracleto stands up in my favor and says, but the blood's been shed on his behalf. And the blood goes further than just a few mistakes. He says that when I save you, I'll save you from your past, your present, and your future sins. That my blood is so powerful, it'll reach out plumb to the very last breath that you take. It'll never fade. It'll never lose its power. It'll never be diluted by the, by the authenticity of this world. But it is the power of God. It comes straight from God. It was God's blood. that shed on Calvary's hill. The blood of God. Now I pray that in this church, right now this is 2022. Y'all ready to make a resolution with me? <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. We join together, we come together, and we find out other people's stories. We spend a little bit of time speaking. And we help them. We encourage them. We speak up for them. Your days of mourning, God just showed me, is over. It's gone. 
It's gone. It's over. But thank God for paracletos in your life. Some of them you thought, but they couldn't handle it. You mourn too long for them. You become something in the way. They got tired. But there were some who never moved. Them are the paracletos in your life. And God says, I'm sending many more just like them. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. All over this place, every head bowed, no one looking around. You say, preacher, I want that Holy Ghost power. Preacher, I don't really know about all this tongue stuff. I haven't been raised about that. I'm not afraid of it. I, I see you do it. I see other people do it, but I just don't know how I'd be able to do it. Preacher, I just don't think it's in my DNA. But preacher, I do want that ability to lay down a night for the Holy Spirit to deposit in me. See, what happens is, is when you get in your prayer closet, nobody else is around and the Holy Ghost comes, you're praying for things that you don't even know that's coming your way. You might not be praying for tomorrow, you might be praying for next year. That God is sending stuff in your pathway to stop the enemy from taking over. I just need to tell somebody here in this new year. Speaking in tongues is not a devilish thing. That's what the devil would like for you to think. Speaking in tongues, it is the power of God. It is the secret weapon that God has given to the church. It's like the phone booth is to Clark Kent. It'll turn you into Superman or Superwoman. You'll transform the transformation of the power of the Holy Ghost. It will speak on your behalf. It will stop the enemy when he wanted to destroy you. Matter of fact, it will heal years of pain that come behind you and now you come out of it but it's still dragging its heel against you and it's trying to keep you down the Holy Ghost will take the very sword of God and sever the ties of your past and tell you you no longer have to live like that you can go to AA you can go to NA you can take all the kind of counseling you want but let me tell you something I'm not saying that counseling isn't good because it is good it's a counsel of good men and women that, 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 that are born again that can lead you to God but I'm telling you right now the Holy Ghost becomes a comforter and a paracletos a helper and it is the spirit of truth And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. All over this building, every head bowed, no one looking around. Just listen to me just for a minute. Preacher, I want the Holy Ghost. I want you to lay your hands on me, and I receive it, and I want it right now I want to pray like that I want to go further preacher until my wits end I try to pray and I just run out of words to pray that's when the paracleto steps in and helps you and says hey save your words I know the king I'll speak straight to him. I know the future. I'll go ahead of you and speak for you. Hallelujah. Preacher, that's me. Just step out of your seat and come right here to the front. 